These are the most in-demand jobs in tech for 2023. So just jumping right into the video, the first one on this list is a site reliability engineer or an SRE. SREs are responsible for exactly what it sounds like, the reliability of a site or an application. With more and more of the world coming online, more and more companies as well as their consumers and customers expect those sites to be on 100% of the time. And while 100% uptime is basically impossible, it's simply going to be 99.9999 with millions of dollars for those extra nines at the end. Site reliability engineers are becoming even more important, especially for companies that are just starting to create a more mature architecture. LinkedIn actually rated an SRE as the ranked 21st most sought after job across the globe and job growth for SREs is projected to grow 21% by 2028. SREs also benefit from engaging work, high salaries, and remote job opportunities. Another plus of being an SRE is that engineers can also push the limits of the technology that they're working on, as well as having direct impact on the client, customers, and applications across the company. In terms of average salaries, there are lots of different numbers online, so I'm going to give you averages from a few different websites, including Glassdoor, where SREs are reported to make an average of about $103,000 per year within the US, while average salaries for an SRE on pay scale are about $118,000 per year in the US. And based on a few articles online, SREs spend a lot of their time with coding automation and configuring internal tools or better interactions with software infrastructure. SREs usually are also in charge of logs and setting benchmarks using tools like Splunk or Datadog to observe and ingest data from across the company. SREs also create a bridge between development and IT operations so that they're able to use automation tools to solve problems and create scalable and reliable software systems and solutions. Not every organization has an SRE team, but the ones that do will probably function a lot better just because of the fact that there is a dedicated team whose specific goal is to make sure that uptime of an environment or of an application or system is live as well as the ones who are hands on deck when it comes to incidents or other events that may impact the availability of an application. But first, I'd like to thank CareerWrist for sponsoring today's video. I know how hard and complicated it can be to find a well-paying job, but some platforms make this process easier for you and one of them is sponsoring today's video. Meet CareerWrist.com, an online learning platform. Even if you don't have any experience in tech, a technical background, or a technical education, Carreras will teach you everything you need to know and help you land a well-paid job in one of the most sought-after professions in the U.S. Carreras graduates are already working in 1,000 plus companies in 40 states. The best way to get started is with one of their basic courses, including manual QA, sales engineering, UX design, or systems engineering. What I also love about Carreras is the Carreras guarantee. They are fully committed to your success and they offer a 100% money-back guarantee if you don't land a job in tech within one year of graduation. You can learn more about the complete terms and conditions on their website. Out of these jobs, 30% or more are fully remote, and salaries for careerist graduates are around $65,000 to $100,000 per year in the U.S. Students also get access to the simplified job application service. It finds relevant job openings and accelerates the job application process by up to five times. Careerist is a great place to start your career in tech, where you'll attend live classes, have one-on-one -on -one guidance from a personal mentor, go through an internship to practice what you've learned, as well as have support at all stages of the program until you ultimately find your first job in tech. For careerist graduates, the average time to get a job in tech is about two to four months if you follow their job search steps and instructions. Don't miss this opportunity to start earning $65 to $100,000 in just a few months' time. You can follow the link in the description below and get a 10% discount for a course of your choice. Thank you, careerist.com, for sponsoring today's video. And the next role on this list I want to discuss is a data analyst, which I was a little bit surprised to find on this list, or to find on a few lists, actually, of jobs that are highly sought after in the 2023. But based on this reasoning for why a data analyst is highly sought after, going to be highly in demand, businesses have to manage and analyze increasing volumes of data, which puts data analysts in high demand across all sectors. Reports show ads for data analyst jobs are up 6.2% from 2019. Data Analysts are responsible for analyzing data using statistical techniques, implementing and maintaining databases, gathering data from primary and secondary sources, as well as identifying, analyzing, and interpreting trends from the data itself. So in a past life, I probably would have highly considered a role, a job in data analytics. Um, that was actually what I did one of my first few internships in when I was going through college. That was actually a lot of my focus in data analytics, as well as doing undergrad research with a professor who works in the big data space. I can definitely see why a role like data analytics is going to be very big in the next 
next few years along with data engineers and data scientists i actually have data engineers also on this list but maybe i can just talk about them together even though they are different jobs but i really think anything in the data space is going to be very big with social media and ads and stuff like that so if you're someone who's interested in data analytics or data science i would definitely consider going into a role like this but i also know people who come from a cs or an it background and then go into data analytics based on some personal projects or some other internships or previous experience that they've had and based on average salaries from glassdoor a data analyst makes about sixty-seven thousand dollars per year and on pay scale an average salary for a data analyst is about sixty-three thousand dollars per year and again keep in mind that these are average salaries there may be people getting paid more than this and there may also be people getting paid less than this so it really depends on the sector you go into your years of experience your background and everything like that all right next role on this list is a devops engineer Currently, the need for DevOps engineers are higher than the amount of people who are actually going into this field. So there's a lot of high demand for DevOps engineers out there right now. And based on a description from Red Hat, a DevOps engineer introduces processes, tools, and methodologies to balance needs throughout the software development lifecycle, from coding and deployment to maintenance and update. DevOps is all about the unification and automation of processes, and DevOps engineers are instrumental in combining code, application maintenance, and application management. When you think of DevOps engineers, you typically are also going to think CI, CD pipeline or continuous integration, continuous delivery. And basically DevOps engineers make it so that developers' lives are a lot easier. I worked very closely with DevOps engineers in my previous role. And let me tell you, they will definitely make your life easier. For example, when you're a developer, you don't have to worry about the nitty gritty of deploying code, of pushing it to production, all the backend wiring and, and stuff that just goes on when bringing code from your local machine to the production environment. And DevOps engineers will handle that entire process. They will create the flow from beginning to end. And that is where your life gets so much easier because, because you get to stay focused on the code that you have to write versus wrangling with Jenkins or GitHub or whatever technologies your company is using to deploy stuff. What is that one big one? Ansible? Obviously, I'm not a DevOps engineer, but I do think their roles are especially important for enterprise environments that have a lot of technicalities and specifics that may need a dedicated team, like a DevOps team, to be able to manage all the pushes to production, as well as to make sure that someone is there if something goes wrong, that someone is there to fix it. A DevOps engineer based on average salaries from Glassdoor is $104,000 per year. And on salary.com, the salary of a DevOps engineer is about $125,000 per year. It's definitely a pretty wide gap. And the next role I want to discuss is one that is special to my heart, and that is a cybersecurity analyst. With more and more companies experiencing cyber attacks, security breaches, just overall security scares, as well as technologies they use or third-party dependencies, more and more companies are beginning to understand that they need a cybersecurity team. And I know for those of you who are watching, my channel does focus specifically on cybersecurity for many of my videos. If you're interested in becoming a cybersecurity engineer, I will link some of those down in the description and I won't go too in depth since you probably already know. But a cybersecurity analyst does many different things depending on the company that they're in. They may be analyzing logs, looking for anomalies. They may also be dealing with incident response, checking certain things. They may also be keeping up with cybersecurity news. They may also be in charge of your company's vulnerability management process. So all in all, cybersecurity analysts really do use broad skill sets across the board. Of course, it depends on your company. Again, a bigger company may have security analysts in different teams working on different things and specifically in different silos. While in a smaller team, you may be doing a bunch of everything. And that's of course still a good thing because you get to learn a lot. But I highly recommend that cybersecurity analyst roles as a great place to start if you're someone who is just getting started in cybersecurity because you just get to touch so many different things, so many different skill sets and tools that when you're just starting out in your career in cybersecurity, it really helps you kind of gather information on what you want to do and what you don't want to do. And it also just helps a lot that cybersecurity candidates are very highly sought after. And there are many, many statistics out there on the need for more cybersecurity talent. So I would highly recommend this role for anyone who is even remotely interested. You should definitely look into it. There are lots of different areas to go into, whether it's blue team, red team, even IT auditing and governance. So you have many different options outside of a cybersecurity analyst too. Based on average salaries from Glassdoor, a cybersecurity analyst makes about $82,000 per year in the US. And on pay scale, the average salary for a cybersecurity analyst is about $77,000 per year. And if you're interested in becoming a security analyst, I have my course linked in my description on how to get your first job in cybersecurity. The next role I want to discuss on this list is a cloud architect. A 
cloud architect is responsible for overseeing a company's cloud computing strategy. This includes cloud adoption plans, cloud application design, and cloud management and monitoring. So back then, a typical company probably had probably had a data center somewhere and they had multiple different racks and racks of servers in those data centers. And they probably had other data centers in other locations as failover, just in case that data center went down. They may have some warm sites or cold sites, which are basically just how ready those data centers on standby are, considering maybe how many backup servers they had, if they even had power, if they had internet, things like that. So there's a lot of things to consider when you have a physical infrastructure that is all yours. And nowadays people use the cloud, which is which is basically like Google Cloud Platform, uh, AWS, uh, Microsoft Azure, those are probably the big names that you've heard of, and as well as the ones with the most certifications out there and jobs that seem to be popping up. Let me know if you guys want me to make a video on those cloud certifications, but I do think they are very interesting and also very highly sought after skills right now because, because many companies are trying to go into the cloud because first, it saves money, also it helps with scalability, also it's just a better long-term plan for most companies, not talking about the very specific ones with very sensitive data that may need to have very specific environments for their servers in that case maybe you might not want for example if you're working in government or if you are a financial institution maybe you would want your own on-prem servers but for most other companies you probably want to go into the cloud because it's cheaper it's more reliable it's more scalable you don't have a bunch of old servers after five years that you don't know what to do with or whatever the amount of years it is to switch out into new servers obviously i'm not an infrastructure gal but i do know that data centers cost a lot of money to manage and upkeep and maintain so cloud architects and anyone working in cloud cloud engineers cloud analysts if that's even a term cloud security engineers i've definitely seen a lot of job openings for that kind of role specifically but essentially more and more companies are trying to move into the cloud and they need and they need specialists who know about these specific cloud they're going into whether it's azure or aws or gcp and companies are also willing to pay a lot of money because many of their current existing employees may not have especially if they are coming from an on-prem environment probably don't have experience with those cloud environments how to deploy to a cloud how to view your data in a cloud how to access the logs how to manage your security how to manage authentication into the cloud what does your infrastructure look like so many questions so few smes on your team that may know about it and as well as just visibility into the cloud which is a whole another thing that big companies with you know, typical brick and mortar servers um, are going to have trouble defining that process and procedure. So if I was someone who was, who was just getting started in my career, I would probably go for some kind of hybrid of a cloud security role. I think that would be a really cool area to go into, as well as with a lot of high demand. And the average salary on Glassdoor for a cloud architect is about $122,000 per year in the US, while on salary.com, an average salary for a cloud architect is about $138,000 per year. I will also point out that there are a lot of contractor roles, specialist or consultant type roles that are in the cloud space. So if you're interested in that kind of flexibility, I think this is also a pretty good area to go into, especially considering some companies may not be looking to hire like a full-time cloud, cloud specialist, but they probably do need someone to come in from the outside who is able to train their existing employees on how to manage the cloud, how to you know, do all those things that I said before, logging and security and events. So there's definitely a lot of flexibility in the career itself. All right, so that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below, as well as any other jobs you would like to add to this list. I know there's definitely going to be a lot of them because honestly, many tech jobs and tech sectors are still growing, even with the recession and, and hiring freezes and things like that. I really do think that tech is going to bounce back because I can't imagine a world where the internet, where the world just stops adopting to the internet or going online. And I just don't really see that happening in the next uh, few years, next few decades. I can only see that going faster. So if you're someone who is just getting started in their career in tech, definitely don't you know, worry too much about the news, even though it is a little bit dark some days. I'm wishing you guys all the best of luck in your careers. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I have videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.